Hi, thanks for coming back to the chopping block. So I was contacted by three different holster makers all in the span of about a week or two asking me to do reviews on their various different holsters. So rather than do a separate review for each one, I figure we roll them all into one video and maybe even do a little compare and contrast between the holsters. Let's take a look. The Vetter is an inside the waistband with a metal clip. We'll get into it a little bit more in detail here in a minute. There's the Harry's holster, which is also inside the waistband with a plastic clip. And it came with a magazine pouch, some mounting hardware, and a separate type of clip. And then there's the Innovations. Apparently that's their name. The website is higherqualityinnovations.com. I'll put URLs to all of these in the description. This one is pretty different. It's a nylon holster with a sort of vinyl uh, faux carbon fiber finish on the outside of the vinyl, uh, outside of the nylon and the inside has this suede or pseudo suede lining that should be very soft on the finish of your gun. What makes this a little different is that they sewed in some square magnets that are arranged with their like poles facing each other so they repel. You can see how if I push this together it doesn't collapse. Normally a nylon holster would collapse inside the waistband making it difficult to reholster. That's the theory anyway. The issue is that the location of these magnets is such that it holds this part open, not the mouth of the holster. So while you're wearing it, your pants can still do that bit and it can still be a little difficult to reholster. It's probably easier to reholster than most nylon holsters or unsupported leather holsters. Um, higher quality leather holsters usually have a welt around the top that keeps the mouth of the holster open so that you can reholster with one hand without putting your other hand down there or having to look at it. And obviously that's very important if you had to get your gun out and there may still be some sort of threat you don't want to take your eyes off of it. There are a lot of features about this holster that I like. I like the adjustability, the reversibility. You can place this clip on the other side. You can adjust the cant of the clip. And the fact that this comes away as well as this part means that you can wear it in a variety of different ways. Um, you could even wear it as an outside the waistband holster if you were so inclined by running your belt through these loops. Either inside the belt, outside the pants, or even outside the belt entirely. This holster does provide a lot of options and I wore it for a while and it's more comfortable than it looks. You look at a holster like this and it, there's just all this stuff going on here and it looks like, oh, holy hell, that'll be just all kinds of stuff poking into my body everywhere. And it really wasn't. It's not as comfortable as some other holsters. I really prefer leather, um, especially uh, hybrid leather Kydex holsters like the Raw Dog that I reviewed the other day or the Crossbreed that I wear most of the time. However, this isn't bad. The biggest problem that I had with it is that the whole purpose to these magnets was defeated by the fact that they're not up here, they're down here. Now I understand that the reason they did that is because they have to put the mounting hardware up here. I think that they probably could have rethought that and made a way for the magnets to sit up here and for the purpose of the holster to actually work. But otherwise, it's a fairly decent holster. This one cost $50. I want to like it, I really do. And not just because they gave me a free holster, but because I 
I really like seeing innovation in the firearm industry, but it just it falls just short of being a really good holster. Decent, but to be perfectly blunt, I don't think it's worth the $50. Really cool idea, not perfectly executed. The Harry's is a pretty standard Kydex holster. There's a few different mounting points for the clips and whatnot. It has the rubber bushings for adjustable tension, which I really prefer seeing in a carry holster. The outside portion of it is cut lower. It doesn't have much in the way of a sweat guard, but it does come up pretty far and you can see that it they didn't just take a sheet of Kydex and mold it around a blank and call that a holster. That's something you see a fair amount in Kydex holsters. There is a little bit of attention to detail here that some people might miss. Like for example, this part here allows for the use of an extended um, slide release and there's room for that slide release to travel through on the draw. I prefer holsters that have the rubber grommets for the adjustable tension. Nobody is really the same in how much tension they want. Plus, the amount of tension that you get is partly dependent on how tightly you have your belt cinched. So, being able to adjust that matters a good deal. Overall, it's a handsome looking holster, even though it's inside the waistband, nobody will ever see it. It's kind of neat that it looks nice. It came with a variety of mounting clips and whatnot. This is something fairly new. I've seen a few holster manufacturers offer this. You can actually get this for a, the innovations or whatever. It's called an ulti clip. And the idea here is that you, obviously, you attach this to the holster, right? There's a couple of different places you can do it, but you attach it to the holster. And then this portion goes inside your pants, of course. This portion goes outside your pants, but inside your belt. You slide it down, press that lever closed, and it snaps pretty solidly. And then that holds the holster in place from your pants, and your belt holds your pants up. I haven't had a chance to play around with this much. I, I, think, I think it might work pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. But the Harry's came with a variety of mounting options. Uh, one of them is this claw, they call it. And the way this works, not so great for fat guys like me, but you skinny folks might get a, a lot of benefit out of it. What you do is you mount it to this side of the holster, like that. This portion pushes against the inside of your pants and your belt. It's at the same level as your belt. It pushes the holster this way, away from your belt. When you're wearing it inside the waistband appendix, it presses the grip closer into your body so you get less printing. Not something I'm likely to get a lot of use out of. I'm too fat for appendix carry. And if I were gonna use it, the last thing I want is to press the grip further into my body. I've got too much body in the way. Now, I wore this for a fair amount of time and it's a very solid holster. It's very easy to put on and take off. It has some features that I really prefer. I mentioned already the rubber grommets for adjustable tension that I like to see on holsters like this. It has a cut into the holster body that gives plenty of room for your belt and a very aggressive edge to the clip so it holds onto the belt really well. It doesn't move around, provides great retention. It's overall, it's a very good holster, but this side of it is lumpier than a lot of other holsters. If you compare it to the Vetter, you can see there is just more areas that stick out deeper and farther than on the Vetter. All of that together, plus maybe the sweat guard might have had a little bit to do with it, but this dug into my body a little bit more than other inside the waistband holsters do. It's not bad, and 
remember that Clint Smith told us that a handgun isn't supposed to be comfortable, it's supposed to be comforting. That said, this was less comfortable than other inside the waistband Kydex holsters I've worn. Your body's different, your pants are different, everything's different. If the features of this holster match up with what you're looking for, it may still be a good holster for your needs. Moving on to the Vetter, this holster has several features that I like. Um, one of them being the steel clip as opposed to the plastic clip. Plastic clips tend to get caught on stuff, especially my fat ass. You, you know those plastic patio chairs, they've got a an edge that faces perfectly at each hip and peels off my pocket clips on my knife, my flashlight, my holster. And when plastic clips get bent too much, eventually they break right along here. The steel clips don't do that. This has a semicircular cut so that you can adjust the cant of the holster. I mentioned earlier that the inside of it felt smoother against my body. You can, you can see that there isn't a dramatic difference between the two, but this one felt a lot more comfortable. It could have to do with the way the end of the holster is closed in, whereas the end of this holster is left open. That may have been the harder edge that I was feeling, but in any case, this Vetter holster felt substantially more comfortable. Uh, like all pocket clip holsters, it goes on and off really easy, but also like all clip-on holsters, it's not going to be as comfortable as the leather Kydex hybrids like the Crossbreed and the MTAC and whatnot. Those are going to be the most comfortable all-day carry type concealment holsters, bar none. There are a lot of different models of them out there, but that style of holster is going to be the most convenient, most comfortable for all day carry. However, a lot of us have to take our guns off when we get to work or drop our kids off at school or whatever. We have to go into a place where we're not allowed to carry a gun, have to take the gun off, leave it in the car or whatever. If you're taking your gun off and on a lot, it may be more convenient to take the whole holster off. A lot of people prefer to do it that way. And if you do, a clip-on holster is gonna be more convenient for that sort of thing. Kydex holsters are also a good choice for when you are probably gonna get wet. If you're gonna do a lot of working outside in the yard, if you're camping, screwing around in the river, that sort of stuff, and you know that you're gonna get wet, a Kydex holster is a really good choice for that. This holster is my favorite of the bunch, but like I said, I carry my crossbreed most of the time. Uh, most any time that I'm going to be wearing the gun all day, I carry the crossbreed. If you're new to carrying, please understand that no matter what gun you get, no matter what holster you get, the biggest difference is going to be that you have a nice, stiff belt, then the holster, then the size of the gun. A lot of people think that they need a tiny gun to carry concealed, and what you really need is you need a quality, stiff belt. You need a holster that's gonna hold that gun securely and stay in place. And then you need a gun that's of an appropriate size. A Glock 19 or 23 size pistol is just about perfect for most people in most circumstances. It's just that belt and holster that matters. If you have any questions about any of these, definitely leave a comment below. I'd be happy to answer whatever questions you have. Please don't take anything out of this thinking that any of these holsters are bad. It's just that some are subjectively better in some ways, and this is just my opinion. As always, thanks for watching. I sure appreciate your support. You guys have a great day. Yeah.